Today's quick tip video is inspired by a question I got from a viewer. It's about using gradients for masks in Affinity Photo. Joan asks, I cannot reuse the gradient tool in a mask. I have to start over with the gradient. Is there something I'm doing wrong? Well, this is a question I was actually wondering myself. So I decided to look into it. First, let's look at the problem that Joan is referring to. Now I have this image of a peach here. And yes, I know the background is very blue. I made it blue just so we can see where the transparency is. Now let me add a mask to the peach. So with the peach selected, I'll click mask layer. Now with the mask selected, I can use a gradient for a mask. So I'll click the gradient tool over here and I'll click and drag and we see it works pretty well. I have all these options. I can move the gradient around, but the issue is that when I click off the gradient, when I go back to the mask, it doesn't remember that it's a gradient anymore. I don't have those gradient controls. Even if I click the gradient button, they aren't there anymore. Basically, I have to start over with the gradient tool again. And it's a minor thing, but it's kind of inconvenient when you want to fine tune your gradients and masks. So let me delete this mask for the time being. I started looking around and I found a solution to this problem. It involves using shapes as masks. So first, let's look at how that works. I'll create some shape here. Let's just create something random. I'll create a heart. So I'll drag a heart shape here. The color doesn't really matter. Now I'll put the heart over the peach here. Now, if you drag a shape over the thumbnail for the image and let go, you can see that that shape will mask the image and we can move the shape around and the mask will act appropriately. Let me delete the heart. Let's use a more practical shape. I'll use a rectangle. So I'll drag the rectangle. And if I drag it into the peach here over the thumbnail, I can change the edges of the rectangle. So if I want to cut off part of the peach, I can cut it in half like that. Now let me drag the rectangle out of the peach here. Let me fully cover it. Now the big question is, can we put a gradient on this shape and use that as a gradient mask? Let's try it. I'll pick the gradient tool, let's draw a gradient here. Let's make it white to black. So what happens if we use the rectangle as a mask now? I'll drag it and it doesn't really behave as we expect. There's no fading out of the mask, even though we had gray colors on it. But there's actually a way to make it work. You see, when we use a shape as a mask, it's not the level of gray in the shape that matters. It's the level of transparency. So let me show this clearly. I'll drag the rectangle out. So when I do the gradient, instead of going from white to say black, I want this black to be transparent instead. So with the black control selected, I'll dial down the opacity here. So now this is what our rectangle looks like. We have the solid side on the left and the transparent side on the right. Now, if I drag my rectangle into the peach, now we're actually seeing that fading to transparency effect. And the best part of this is when the rectangle is selected, if I choose the gradient tool, I can actually move my gradient around and I can change it again. I can make it a radial gradient if I like. I can move the medium point here. I can add other control points. Now just remember when you add another control point, it's not the level of gray that's affecting it, it's the level of transparency. If I look at this point here, the opacity is about in the 41% range. If I dial it up to 100%, that's gonna change the effect. So if you wanna be able to control the gradients for your mask, Use a shape and make sure your gradient is based on the transparency, not the levels of black and white. So thank you, Joan, for that question. If anyone else out there has topics they want to see for a video, let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.